This is a crystal lens exchange. The patient presented about five weeks after her initial cataract surgery with the sudden onset of a uh, Z syndrome. The uh, nasal haptic was uh, severely elevated and the um, uh, uh, patient uh, had loss of vision. The original operating surgeon uh, observed her with medication for two weeks and uh, then referred her to me for surgical management. A decision was made to exchange this lens as my calculations show that with this implant, even if it were successfully repositioned, she would have had some uh, hyperopia. Uh, and we exchanged this uh, 14 diopter lens for a 15 diopter lens. I also felt that it would have been quite difficult to manipulate this lens without uh, taking it apart. So here you can see that um, we've made a scleral tunnel incision on the steep axis as the patient had about 1.7 diopters of astigmatism. Uh, so uh, the uh, incision here is made uh, generously to um, uh, reduce some of her astigmatism in this axis. We've cut the uh, plate uh, that is elevated because uh, that's quite easy to cut and it's quite easy to get at with the uh, scissor and we've removed the main body of the lens in one piece through this scleral tunnel incision. Um, now I'm going to go after the um, uh, haptic that is embedded uh, uh, in the uh, nasal side. Uh, in this area the capsule is uh, fibrosed around the plate uh, the plate was digging into the posterior capsule uh, posteriorly and the um, uh, and elevated um, at the hinge. Uh, here you can see that the um, uh, one of the whiskers is pretty socked in and we're and I'm carefully dissecting this out with uh, a blunt dissection. Um, it's much easier to manipulate these plates. Uh, and whiskers uh, like this, once you've cut them at the hinge, if this were attached to the rest of the lens, it would be very difficult to do this type of dissection. But here, with a two-handed technique using a micro, micro forceps, I can sort of sweep away the uh, adherent capsule and pull this plate out um, without damaging the posterior capsule. Um, at this point, the capsule bag is uh, dilated with viscoelastic and a decision uh, had been made previously to use a capsule tension ring to uh, try to uh, stiffen up the capsule bag and provide more even uh, 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 zonular uh, distribution forces uh, on the uh, implant uh, when we replaced it to prevent the recurrence of a Z syndrome. So we're dilating the capsule bag with viscoelastic and now I'm going to uh, insert a uh, CTR. Um, in this case uh, the CTR is a bit difficult to insert because the uh, fibrosis uh, at the uh, area where the uh, plate was uh, adherent uh, nasally uh, won't allow the CTR to advance uh, smoothly through that area. Uh, which creates a little buckling pressure on the CTR as it's inserted. I had to drop that uh, uh, distal part of the CTR in the uh, eye and it did not end up completely in the bag. So here I'm manipulating that part of the CTR which had been um, overriding the anterior capsule into the capsule bag completely. Um, and uh, after inspecting it, we were able to reposition that in the bag. Now I'm going to place the crystal lens. Uh, a decision was made to use a uh, crystal lens in this case to replace the original crystal lens. And I felt that this would be successful uh, given the uh, 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 condition of the capsule bag after placing the CTR. Um, the pupil is coming down a little bit, and it's a little bit hard to see the anterior capsule rim. So I chose to um, grab the uh, um, uh, trailing plate with a uh, micro forceps and drop it directly in the capsule bag uh, under the anterior capsule rim. Um, and here I've uh, guided it into position. Um, 
after dropping this uh, distal plate in the capsule bag, um, I'm going to inspect with a uh, micro um, Krugelin hook uh, to make sure that the plate is indeed in the capsule bag under the anterior capsule. I'll rotate the lens a little to make sure it's in the equator of the bag and then by retracting the iris I can actually grab the anterior capsule rim with the Krugelin hook to make sure that it is riding over the plate. Here you can see uh, I'm able to engage that anterior capsule rim uh, guaranteeing that the uh, plate is in the capsule bag. I'm going to remove the uh, residual viscoelastic here uh, and after doing this uh, I've made a decision to uh, reconstruct the original cataract surgeon's clear cornea wound. Uh, this uh, clear cornea wound was placed uh, superiorly and it was inducing some flattening which was exaggerating the patient's uh, astigmatism and I felt that in addition to uh, doing a scleral tunnel incision on the steep axis uh, I would reconstruct uh, this clear cornea incision uh, to reduce the flattening effect it had on the uh, cornea in this area and the exaggeration of the astigmatism that we saw. Uh, first I reopened the incision with a Sinsky hook and then I sutured it uh, uh, a little uh, fairly tightly uh, adjusting the tension on the suture after um, refilling the anterior chamber with BSS. Um, the uh, suture's initial throw is made fairly tight. The anterior chamber is uh, deepened with BSS to make the pressure a little higher in the eye. And then the uh, final throws in the suture are made after tightening it a bit to uh, make sure that this incision uh, it does not contribute uh, uh, to any flattening in this meridian. Uh, after uh, completing this uh, suture, the knot is buried and the uh, surgery uh, is complete. The next day the patient's vision was 20-25 plus 2 uncorrected uh, with uh, about a quarter diopter of astigmatism and she was uh, very pleased with this outcome. The implant was in excellent condition, excellent position, uh, arched posteriorly uh, without uh, any evidence of any folds or stria in the posterior capsule.